I have been ready to go. Westcoaststyles.com. This is your guy, Jamal, here. And I'm joined by one of the most legendary DJs on the West Coast, the world's most dangerous DJ, my man, DJ Speed. How you doing, man? I'm chilling. What's up? Doing good, man. Doing good. So, you know, we're just going to get right into it, man. You know, you were, you were touring and DJing with one of the greatest groups in hip hop, man. You were touring <laughs> with the NWA. You know, yeah. you know, we've heard the stories. We've seen the movies. You know, we've seen every single documentary when you were there. Um, uh, what's, what's, um, what are, what are some of the, what are some of the things you remember about, you know, those tours and, you know, traveling with the group? And those experiences. I remember everything. <laughs> from, the first, <laughs> from the first show to the last one. I remember them all. It was just it was it was different. <laughs> it, was, it came out of nowhere. It just basically I just I was still in high school. Like I was barely yeah, I was barely still in high school and everything just came out of nowhere. It just went from kind of being local to we went on the road and we in Nashville, Tennessee, first show of the Evie Dother tour. Like it was <laughs> man yeah you know and you know especially at a time when you know there were there was a lot of scrutiny with that group right so Dude, you know that was, <laughs> that's when the the letter from the fbi just kind mm -hmm. of started circulating and it was just like every almost every stop we had it was it was always some kind of brief in a lecture about doing the song and doing other songs it, it, it wasn't just about the police it was also the uh, it was another song that they would really didn't want want us to do a lot. So it was it was it was crazy, but they still did it every night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It didn't matter, yeah. It didn't matter at all. Yeah. So you know, you said you know you were really young at the time. What what's going through your mind when all these things are happening on tour? You know, you're away from home. You know, you're getting letters from the FBI. There's hella police at your shows. Like, are you just like, yo, what what I get myself into? Like, <laughs> for me, it was it was. It was. It's the same way it is now. I mean, I was. I was ride or die then. I'm ride or die now. If the FBI want to send a letter, hey, they send a letter to everybody. It wasn't just <laughs> those five members of the group. It was for everybody affiliated. So it's mm -hmm. like, because I, I consider myself. I don't care what anybody ever says. I consider myself, the DOC and Laylaw as the, the 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 third other member that was in the group because we were like the closest to the group in in general. Mm -hmm. So it's just like. It was ride or die. It, it didn't. It didn't scare me. I mean, coming from Compton, like shit, I don't think a letter gonna scare me. Like he showed right. up at the door with with my AKs. It's a different story. But a letter? Yeah, come on, bro. I'm from the street. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think way worse than letters. And it was. It was. It was comical because I mean, that's what was the best thing about Eric. Eric just he he would see something like that, and he knew how to turn that into like the most publicity you can get from it and make it make something negative seem like it's a positive and that's why everybody was kind of like really not true i mean priority was tripping because <laughs> they they're not used to that because they come from the california raisins and now you got yeah. brothers in here got fbi <laughs> letters but as far as eric kept everything mellow on our side it was mellow because he just he knew how to do that just like okay it's a letter so what let's take it let's take advantage of this now look at it <laughs> yeah right it's still yeah, it's still it, getting it, 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 it's more relevant now but it was relevant then but we just didn't have social media with no instagrams and so our social media was the streets like so it, it was it was relevant then but it's just it, it seems different now to people like okay like now you want to listen but this was going on before i was born <laughs> they knew <laughs> the yeah same shit. you know it, it was just it was finally being brought to light now through you guys um you know, talking about Easy E, you know, he, you know, I was, I, I wasn't born yet when he passed, um, but um, you know, you were around him a lot, and you got to see him work and create. Um, you, and, you know, we, we hear about how much of a genius he was. You know how, you know, lyrically how great he was. Um, do Do you remember any times, you know, with this process and making the music, um, and how and how that went? I mean, I was there. I mean, I got the pictures to show. I was there from the first day of recording the Strata Compton. I mean, for all of them. So it's just like, but seeing him, he wasn't a rapper. I mean, everybody knew that he wasn't. He didn't even want to rap. It was so hard for Trey to get him to do that. And but then for him to go from that to what he was, it was crazy. But then, but you had to kind of know him to know 
how much of a mastermind he was. Like people just, most people just know him from the, from the music and that's where it kind of stops. And then everybody else with the rumors of this rumors, it's just, it's so many stories out there and most of them are bullshit. I mean, I'm just calling it for what it is, but it's just like, if you knew him, knew him, you would know the talent that he did have. It's just like he, he, he knew talent in people. And he did, like I said, he knew how to take a situation that might be negative and turn that into something that you're like, okay, this is a positive thing. Like, but it's really negative, but he's gonna make you seem like it's a positive. But he just knew he was a good dude, like just all around good dude from music to family, just everything. I mean, you know, got a lot of kids, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what dude don't, but but the thing with that is just like he, he loved them all. It did it, it yeah. that, that was just his thing. But I just wish he was here because people just don't know how genius he really was. Like he, mm-hmm. I mean, if you ever sat down with Will, I am Will could tell you stories that would trip you out because he he saw what Will didn't even see in him back then. Like Will mm-hmm. would always had talent, but they Eric signed them way back in the day. The, the album never came out, but he just knew he he was that he had that type of mentality just to know like okay, this dude has something. Really, dang. He, so- from, I wasn't around at the time, but when he signed Bone, from what I was told, that was the fastest he'd ever signed anybody. They said he heard them, literally had contracts already sent out <laughs> the same night. So that's like the fastest he'd ever signed anybody because he just knows talent. It's like when you have it, you go for it. I mean, he had, it's people on the roster that people didn't even know about, like from the Kid Frost and like all these people that they are household names, but he, Threw them, threw them, and threw them out there when they were still trying to get out. So it's just like it. Eric was a great dude, like just in general. Like <clears throat> that's dope to hear. You know, I mean, you know, you don't really hear many stories like that because, so you know, just in thinking about that, do you think, you know, and you talked about social media before. You think if social media was around, he would have, um, you know, uh, easy would have been portrayed as a totally different person from what you saw and experienced behind the scenes? It kind of depends because with social media, it just comes a lot of social bullshit. So mm-hmm. it's just like you, you, it's like right now, like I'm debating with people about this documentary that his daughter and his baby mom are putting out. Like it's, most people agree, but it's still some people that feel like, oh, well, you, you shouldn't go against that. That's his daughter. You got to understand these people going against his family. They are his family, but they're going against his family. So it's just yeah. like you, so, so it's like you got people that believe this bullshit. They coming out with a documentary about his death. How are you going to do a documentary about your father's death when number one, you were two or three years old and your mother wasn't, you, him and her weren't like this. So it's just like it, and you leave, leave out the whole family. So it's the, social media, it, it can go both ways. You, you never know how it would be. <laughs> I like real life. <laughs> so exactly. It, it's much easier, but it's just like with social media. It's, even with after the movie, that's when everything really started kind of really spinning because every everybody had a story. Everybody mm-hmm. knows this. Everybody knows that. Everybody, you're not this, you're not that. It's just, it's, for me, I don't, I don't, I don't give a damn about any kind of recognition, any kind of monetary, any, I'm, I just do what I do because Eric did what he did for me. I don't give a damn about anything else that comes with it. People believe it. People don't, I don't care. Like I don't, I don't do things for a dollar. Like they wanted me to be a part of this documentary. Once I found out what it was really about zero, they, they offered me a lot of money. I'm talking a lot of money and I turned it down. So it's, I do what I do for Eric. I did it straight out of Compton. I do it for whatever because he treated me like a son. He didn't have to do anything he did for me. The day I met him, he gave me a, a set of turntables and said, we're going on tour. This is the day I met him. I only knew him from Easy. I lived two blocks from him, but never had met him. You just know him. That's, it was legendary in, in our area. Yeah. And Ren, I'm indebted to Ren and also because he's the one who introduced me to him. He, out of nowhere, like, I'm going to take, take you to meet Eric. I don't know where it came from, but he did. The rest is history. And I, I'm indebted to Ren forever like i've been knowing Ren since grade school so we're but <laughs> we good like he he didn't have to but eric is just that type of person he he sees stuff in people that other people didn't see he he did he just saw it because look at nwa look at everybody that came after it. he he started to, he built a tree that was just 
You know what I mean? It's just like everybody could say, okay, everybody in the group had talent. They did, but a lot of people have talent, but it takes sometimes it takes somebody to put that talent together when you have <laughs> multiple, when you're dealing with multiple people. It takes somebody to kind of piece that together, and that's what he did. <clears throat> Especially, you know, with all those different personalities, you know, um, how was that, you know, kind of watching all those personalities kind of get navigated, you know, Cube, Dre, even though they aren't what they are now, but, you know, it was building to something. And even Jerry Heller, you know, dealing with all that. Um, how was that, how was there able to be like, um, you know, just like kind of like not civil, but like, how was that able to be like everyone can coexist and just make it work? Or was that just, you know, we're on stage, you know, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I'm going to be honest it it looked good probably from people looking. It, it it wasn't what it seemed sometimes on to the public's eye. Mm -hmm. And it and, and it all did it, it if you pinpoint it, it goes to Jerry. Listen, for me, me and Jerry have never, had never, ever, ever from day one to the day he passed away got along. But I give him credit because he took NWA and put them into another place, but then he got over cocky and too carried away, and he wanted basically wanted Eric to be his own. That's basically what he wanted. So he wanted to segregate Eric from everyone else, and that's why everything started. I can tell you this: from the start, before Cube left, he warned everybody. He not no not Cube. I mean Arabian. Before Arabian left, he warned everybody, and that kind of got into Cube's head and that's why he started okay looking into who was this Jerry dude and blah blah Raymond already knew he knew about Jerry from a lot of shit before so he told them before he left Cube took it just to the next level like okay I'm gonna really see what this dude is about he saw what he was about I don't like talking about Jerry a lot because he passed away but at the same time he he tried basically relentlessly to to discredit my name, I could care less. Like that's the problem with them. They think I care what they say about me. It's like I know what I lived. I know what I've been through. I know who I was with Eric. Everybody around knows how I was with Eric. So what you say really doesn't matter. Like you, they just want the public to believe that I'm a nobody. But like I said, social media is social media. When I go outside, if you got love for me, I got love for you. I don't really give a damn about how many followers and how many people you tell this. It doesn't matter. I know what I lived. And it's just as simple as that. But Jerry tried so hard to just separate every every corner he could, where it was Q, Brand, whoever. He tried to segregate everybody away from Eric because he wanted Eric to be just Eric for him. And that's where all this the biggest tr trouble really came. Like people pulled the bullshit about how Cube said it was it was the check. I'm gonna tell you, I'm not going deeper because it wouldn't be in my place to do it. But it's deeper than that check. I can tell you that right now. People want to try to pinpoint on the cube. Oh, they only got paid this much. It's deeper than that check, 100%. And people don't get that. They don't understand that this man separated the world's most dangerous group. He basically broke them up. Mm -hmm. it, it, was just, it, was, it was hard because when people, when they weren't working, everybody was kind of doing their own thing. But it me personally, I just I knew something was wrong when when they were working on niggas for life. I just knew something was wrong at that point because you could tell after being in the studio with every every other, you could tell something was wrong. But it just it it made me mad because it's just like you got a group <laughs> that could be still together to this day. Like it it was in the works. Eric actually did talk to Cube. They actually had a conversation. But it just made me so mad that you got a group that had so much potential, you got broken up by one man. That man just put, he put venom in everybody's soul mm -hmm. and that's why the group broke up. And then it just made it, it looked even worse because it made it seem like everybody hates each other. It's still, at times, it, people ask me that and I'm like, you gotta understand these dudes. These dudes got love for each other, massive love, but it, how it seems sometimes, it's not always how it is. They just think, oh, well, this person not on that song. Okay. They don't have to be on every song. Like, no. they, and then people get mad. Like, Oh, why won't Dre perform with them? It, he has his reasons. It's, it's nothing personal towards them. It's just like he, I think in Dre's head, he feels like it's not NWA without Eric there where 
Cube and Red just love to perform. And they have love for Eric, but it's like they just love to perform. I think Dre is on some other shit. Like, if I'm going to do NWA, I want the whole group. I want everybody there. I'm not really trying to do it. <laughs> like, yeah. so I, I think that's what's behind this thing. But there's, there's no animosity, no hate, or nothing like that. People always speculate shit. It, it, it makes me mad because I hear so much. I hear shit from people who weren't even born. Like, they telling me shit. Like, <laughs> I lived with Eric for six years, and you telling me how he was. Oh, this chick said this. I'm like, okay. She's basically, he has one, two, two that I know perfectly. He has two cool baby mamas. Everybody else, forget about it. <clears throat> they're, they're, I call them, you, you basically, you're, you're just, you're, you're your outlet. <laughs> like, you're the outlet for the show. And it's the truth because I'm not saying he didn't love these women, but you guys understand if, if if I'm in the car with you and you're going to see somebody and you're like waiting in the car, I'll be right back, and you come back, let's say 45 minutes later, I don't think he loves you, girl. Like, really? <laughs> like, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just being real. And like, because I'm being real now because she she wants to talk about me and I'm talking about Tracy. I don't care about saying her name or her daughter. I don't, I don't care. They can't do anything to me. I don't care. You from the jungle, gangster, okay. But guess what? Everybody that was gangster when you were younger, they old and dead. I'm get out of here. <laughs> but it's just, no, it's just, it's, it's weird because I don't, I never talked about those. I've never, we've never like been friends, but I, you know, I know her, but she talks about me because she was friends with Jerry. So now she wanted to carry it on. But then they have the nerve to ask them for my help for that documentary and all this other stuff. So I'm I'm confused. Like you want my help, but you don't like me. Like I'm 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 this, I'm that, I but you don't like me. You can't even tell me my real name. How do you not like me? Uh-huh. And I've known you, I've known you from day one. The day he met you, I've known you. But you so it's like for me, like I don't I just tell people don't listen to all this, this bullshit that people say out there. It, it's it's a lot of talk, and everybody wants to have a story. And it, and after Shout Out of Compton, it was the worst. <laughs> it still is. It's just like everybody has a story. Everybody knows what happened, and that didn't happen, and this person did this person. And and they keep trying to blame Dre and Cube for Eric's part. That was Tamika Wright. Tamika did that entire part. Dre and Cube, before I – Cube brought me in in 2011. He told me, look. I'm not going to speak on Eric at any point after I left. That's why I want you to be a part of this. I did everything I could do. Tamika came in there and just wiped everything out, and she did her own story. She did a story that didn't make any sense. Number one, Eric was not broke. He was worth $33 million when he died. Mm. Secondly, the house that they said he moved into was the house that we had in the 80s. That was the first house he bought in Norwalk. So he had already lived in the house. She never lived in the house, ever. She never even spent the night in that house, ever. But she made it seem like they moved into the house after the fact when he was broke. And it that was her part. So I, I just wish people would understand that Dre and Q don't hate Eric. They didn't do that. That was all Tamika Wright. You can ask Universal that. It was that's what they told me from the start. I'm not speaking on Eric. One one word on Eric after I left, because that that's only right. They didn't they don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. And, and this so, is for the movie, right? This yeah, is... this is for the movie. And she, so she did his entire part. That was all her. And wow. people, people are mad saying, oh, Dre and, Eric, Dre and Cube did Eric wrong. That was Tamika. That was Tamika Woods Wright. That's who did that. Nobody, they had zero to do with his character. Zero. I came in there. He told me 2011. They didn't start filming until 2015. I knew 2011 that they wanted nothing to do with speaking on Eric because at the time, Dre wasn't even involved. Honestly, it was only Q. Dre had declined three times before he did that. Until F. Gary Gray got on board, he said no three times. Mm. He, he just went, he gave him, like, because I was at the production office every day, and they were trying to get him. They were just trying to get people, but they kept trying to get him, and he kept, he, he kept respectfully declining. But then when F. Gary Gray came in, he got on board. He was like, okay, now I'm down. But I, it, would, it wouldn't have been a movie without him. It just, it just yeah. wouldn't have. Like, if you didn't have him involved but they left out a lot of people that kind of made me mad but i they would ask me daily like oh who should we talk to but i'm telling them people they had lists they had like different lists they had a list of suge and everybody kind of affiliated with him who they didn't want involved and they had jerry heller they had they didn't want him or anybody in his family involved and i'm just like okay that's cool but 
it, it was certain people that they still left out that they could have brought in. I wanted them to do some with Arabian. I told them about JJ Fad. It's just like it didn't. But I get it. You put thirty years into <laughs> a couple hours. Yeah. I get it. But I just I feel like it would have been better if they would have did a yeah a, a, a multi part documentary or, or yeah. something like because it, it's too much to cover. Each person could have had their own. You know what I mean? Like it could have been like the defiant ones. Defiant ones they they did they started. They they did each person had his own. Dre had his own. Jimmy had his own. And they had the death row thing. And like that's how that movie should have been. Or it should have spun into something like that. Because you want to know. I don't want people to be thinking all Eric did was rap. I don't want people to think all Ren does is just rap and then he goes to hide somewhere. It's like you you want to know about these dudes. Like yeah. beyond just the villain and and, and the hip hop thugster. So it, it still needs to be a documentary, but the, it's just so hard because when you have people like Tracy who fight for a bullshit documentary that she's doing about the death of Eric, who you, you aren't the person to be speaking about the death of Eric. You aren't. Like, yeah. that, that should be something his mother's doing. If she wants to know, uh, not you. That You you don't earn the right. They they treat Eric like he only had one child, her, EB. That was it. That's the only, they don't even try to acknowledge the other children. Wow. And, and it, it's, that's why shit can't get done because you have shit like that happening. And, and it, it's just weird. And I, I was quiet for years. I just tried to stay away from it. The family knew I'm down, but I just kind of kept quiet. I can't do it no more. I don't care. I don't. I don't have anything to gain. I don't have anything to lose. I just have to tell people the truth. I don't really care. I don't. Like I said, it's not about a dollar. It's not. Yeah. It's not. I got. I got my money, and if I need some, I can go get some. <laughs> I don't need to, to be trying. To, I, I would never put Eric on on, on some kind of slander shit just for. For a dollar, like what's that DJ dude, the dude that does a lot of interviews, uh, Vlad. Vlad. He wanted to interview me, and when oh, I, oh man, I, I had a conversation with him before. It was like, oh, he wants to talk to you, blah blah. To go, so we had a conversation. He's just like, oh, would you be down to tell stories about any of the guys and throw them under the bus? I'm like, absolutely not. He got mad at me, canceled the interview. I'm like, bro, I would have canceled it myself after you asked me that question. Like that didn't. So I see what he does. Like he's definitely a culture, whatever they call that shit. But he, like, yeah. that's dumb. Why would you want me to throw these dudes under the bus for a reason? For your ratings? Uh-huh. <laughs> your ratings don't help me, bro. Like, what the fuck? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Ten people or ten thousand. Like, I, I'm not that dude. Like, I'm not. I can't. So I turned out a lot of shit over my span. I've turned like after Eric died, I turned out. It was books and all kind of shit. I wouldn't do shit. I wouldn't say nothing. Like, I Dang. that that's. That's only right. It, it, it still yeah. is only right. That's why you see people like his security guard, Ron, the one that we lived with us too. He won't do any interviews. Donovan from the studio won't do interviews. It's like they keep trying, but it's, it's funny because people try. They keep trying. They get they get these people's numbers. I don't, they don't even know how they get in their numbers, but they're calling like they won't do interviews. And these are people that know Ron knows probably the most out of anybody about Eric. He was with Eric to the dying day. Like he knows. He knows all that, but he. It, some people just don't want to. They want his memory to stay the way it is. Like they're not trying to add shit to it where people can add on to that. You know what I mean? It's like they could say one thing, and then somebody's gonna add on to that, and it's gonna r- run rapid, and then everybody, oh well, you did this, and nah. I just wish people would just let them rest in peace and, and and just be happy with the memory. Like just just love who he was. Like it's just everybody wants to make money off of it. Yeah. Like, from the shirts, like I go to Compton. This is the, this is the worst part for me. I'm born and raised in Compton. I didn't move there, no age. I was born and raised in Compton. Same house, same street. I go through the hood now. Every it's not a block you can go down without seeing something in WA. Mm-hmm. But there's there's no easy street. There's a fake easy day they came up with or something. There's no easy street. Nipsey passed away. Rest in peace. I mean, but this block was announced the same night. You know what I mean? Like, can this man that put this city on the map get a street? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Can anything? Can he get a liquor store named after him? But not, but you drive to the hood everywhere, corners, side side murals, liquor stores. Um, what's that store? The shoe palace, big ass, yeah. display in the window, huge. But this man can't get a street. <laughs> has there been anything? Has there been anything filed for that? To to try to get him a street in Compton, I heard, or I heard it. I heard it was. I, I don't know. Me personally, I'm. I would. I'm. I'm one to try to get him a documentary. That's what I and 
couple people that I'm working with trying to do. But the street is definitely something that I would love to sit down with his kids and try to figure out because everybody, and I'm not saying he has to be like it, but you got to understand this man put the city on the map. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's, it's a different story there. Like, is this, this, you, nobody would be screaming Compton if it wasn't for him. I can tell you that shit right now because I was born and raised there and wasn't nobody screaming Compton unless it was a murder in that motherfucker. That was it. It wasn't screaming Compton in fucking Connecticut and fucking overseas and all this. So it's like, can this man get a street? Yeah. The street he grew up on, just do that. That's what, three blocks? Can he just get a street? That That's all I ask. Just give him a street. Like, yeah. uh, now I'll change the name of the park, Kelly Park to Air Gray Park. Dude, give this man something because he put the city on the map. I understand Kendrick is the hot dude or whatever. He got the key. Where's Eric's key at? I'm not hating on none of these people. That's why I don't really like speaking on a lot because people take it that way. I got love for Kendrick. I got love for everybody from my city that's really from my city, <laughs> not the yeah. ones who claim that city. Exactly. <laughs> that's a whole different story because I got about a whole list of them. And, and then they live in Riverside. <laughs> you know? no, it, it, it's, hey, it's, it's really some people that are household names that aren't from the city. I'm, I'm just being real, but I, I, I'm cool with a couple of them, so I ain't going to put them on blast, but I know Gorilla Black, I put him on. He ain't from the city. He, I don't even. I think his grandmother just lived there, so he claimed it. That he did the whole song. I'm like, bro, you not even from Compton. Like, it's cool. I mean, everybody. But it, I guess that's what that's what sells. But it's just like he he needs a street. Like Eric, a street, a park, a water fountain. I don't give a damn. Like he made this city a household name. If it wasn't for Eric. I mean, me personally, I think Eric and McMaster Spade need need to share a street or get their own street because those are the two people that stream Compton the most. Yes. And you gotta you gotta give Mix Master Spade his props. He he put King T and all of those dudes on. That's DJ Pooh, King T. That's his he had his own tree. So Eric then Eric had his tree. So those two dudes need they need to be recognized in the city. I, that's how I feel. I, I, I drove through the city with with Cube and, and, and Dre when they were doing the commercial right before the um right the day before the, the incident happened with Suge and Homeboy. I was with them in the motorcade. We driving down Compton but I'm not Compton, uh Rosecrans. Hitting potholes, seeing abandoned buildings, seeing this, seeing that. And I'm like, oh yeah, we we get out, me and Dre go have a talk about this. Still ain't talked about it, bro. I'm still a little upset about that. I'm like, bro, you your money come from this city. Like and you <laughs> And, 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 and this doesn't bother, it bothers me. It bothers because I, I used to drive down that street or ride bikes and go to the uh, the bike store over there. And that shit is like a fucking, like a war zone. Like it's potholes everywhere, abandoned fucking buildings. And it's just like, I'm like, damn, really? Like, but then he was going to open up the school over there. And I was in LA. I'm like, I, I, Dre is the reason I'm a DJ. I got love for Dre for the rest of my life. It just makes me mad that people see these things and they don't really react to it. And I know you can't save the world. It's your money. You made it. But yeah. a lot of your money came from this city. Period. It came from this city. Like, you got albums named after the city. We can't let that shit happen. I'm just one person. I'm like... I know others do shit in the city, but and then people always frown on Shug, but you gotta understand when Shug was out, he did bad shit, but he did good shit. <laughs> <laughs> Them turkeys and all that shit was given out every year. It was it was people taken care of. He wasn't the greatest dude. Shug ain't the greatest friend to have. Yeah. But he's not the worst. I've never had an incident. I've I've known Shug since eighty seven. I've never had an incident with him. We talk we used to talk regularly. I've run into him. I used to go to Death Row. I was probably one of the only per- persons that went to Death Row in any color I wanted. And nobody said shit. So I I got love for him. I know he's not a good dude. I know he's done a lot of shit. But who has yeah. You gonna really sit here and tell me Jimmy Iovine ain't done shit? He just no, good at it. He just good at hiding it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, so so with with talking about Shug and Death Row, um, were were you were, were you with Dre when he made that move to Death Row, or was it just this, since you were this, cool Shug? I. I was, listen, we were, I got to look at the, I have the, um, the little magazine from it, but we were at a award show. They were in the car with me. It was Dre, Michelle A, I think, a security guard. And that, and Dre told me he was leaving. He told me the, the night he was leaving and asked, 
would I be down the road? I, I, my loyalty was with Eric. That's where I stayed. But I was still around all those dudes. I, I got pictures, and Eric knew it. I came home playing the Chronics way before it was out. He <laughs> knew all this, but he never said nothing because he got Eric put me on. Dre is the reason I DJ. I'm not going to say fuck either one of them. But if it really came down to it, I would have to say, okay, Dre, I got to – because Eric <laughs> is the dude that got me afloat, really. But it right. never came down to that. So I, I was around. It was never a conflict, but I never I never wanted to go over there. Like, never. I would go hang out at their row and shit like that, but I never wanted to be there. I already I, – I knew the vibe. Like, <laughs> I've been around shit. Like, I, I know that vibe. So if that's not a vibe, I, I – I go around. <laughs> I like yeah. my life and shit. But I knew, <laughs> I, knew, <laughs> I knew me and him were cool. And I never had a problem with it. And I think because he looked at me, I, I wasn't a threat to him. You know, yeah. it's like, I'm not a record executive. I'm not this. I'm not somebody trying. I'm just me. I see you. I don't give a fuck who you beat up yesterday. I'm like, oh, what's up? You good? You blah, yeah. blah. So but that's what people like him buy into. When you come up to him and you sucking up to him basically he already knows you a weak-minded motherfucker yeah, you're you already, yeah. you already kissing my ass so i'm gonna I'm I'm feed into that so that's that's every hood nigga. like so yeah. but people you know he just took it to another level but at the same time what i say about you it's negative but you cannot take away the fact that you wouldn't know who the fuck new dog is if it wasn't for sure I don't give a fuck. I don't a give a fuck. Of, a lot of yeah. A lot, that whole roster, you wouldn't you wouldn't know what the fuck a Jewel is. You wouldn't know a Dog Pound, a Nate, none of those, because they were all all active <laughs> before that. So it's just like he he took that and he just he catapulted it to superstar them. So that's why uh, Snoop to this day, Snoop don't talk bad about him. Snoop know what he did, but he won't talk bad about him because he knows that he made him. Yeah. You can't. I tell people no matter what, I don't give a fuck what somebody did to you. If they kind of put you on, you gotta let some shit go sometimes. <laughs> you, know yeah, yeah. you ain't gotta be best friends with them, but if somebody puts you on and you went through a bunch of shit, look at Michael Jackson. He went through a gang of shit with his father, but would he be would he have been Michael Jackson exactly. <laughs> without Joe? You definitely gotta remember where you came from. Yeah, you gotta remember where you came from, but at the same time, you gotta respect who you are. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you ain't you ain't fucking with me now. I'm 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 established, but you can't never forget where you came from. So that's that's why it's funny for me. It's a lot of people that were affiliated with Ruthless that just they on some other shit. I'm not saying they're not not any of the members, but it's just some people that were affiliated with us in the in the circle and on some other shit. They just it's more about what they can get for themselves than what really happened or what really going on. And, and it's one motherfucker that nobody talks about him, which I'm glad. Crazy D. He was just in the crew. It was just a part of a motherfucker that was around. He runs around telling everybody he was in the group. He has unreleased songs. He has this. He did this. And I'm just like, bro, you was a motherfucker on Dope Man. You was just you was just the Mexican accent on, on Dope Man. Like, but he tells people he was in the group. He told people he was in the group before Randy Yeller. Mind you, the group is called Niggas with Attitudes. You're not black. <laughs> So, but he, to this day, he still runs around telling people, like, I hit him up for the movie. I don't like talking to him at all, but I hit him up. I'm like, look, bro, they, they'll they pay you if you got some footage or photos. No, I'm holding on to it. to do my own documentary. Oh, right, good luck. Good yeah, luck with that, yeah, brother. You know. Good luck with that. Have fun with that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you, that's what these people are on. It's like, it's people that's sitting on things thinking that it's going to just pop up somewhere. It's like, if you, if you took everybody affiliated with Ruthless from day one to now, I have the most archive of anything i don't sit on shit my yeah. shit has been in everything relatable it's been in i got photos and every documentary that has anything from michelle a's documentary all the way down i don't sit on shit because why am i going i'm not trying to say in 30 more years i'm gonna go ahead and make this documentary bro it's it's now like i, yeah. I lived it let the world see it that's why i post my fucking photos i don't give a shit like i, I got stacks of photos stacks of fucking tour paths i i have every Ticket stuff from every concert I've ever been to, all the way back to NWA. Every wow. Concert, every tour pass, all that shit. I have a big ass tub full of that shit, and it's all kind of not organized, organized, but it's not messed up. I'm not sitting on that shit. If somebody needs it and somebody want it, whatever, okay, boom. But it's these history. Fools be, but these fools be sitting on shit. Like they're just, they really think it's a payday. Like I got this. Like I can tell you this right now. Crazy D don't have nothing that's gonna. Shock the world. He has nothing. If he has any songs, he has stuff. They used to record 
with the four track. You know, back in the day, we all had the four track. He said he probably has a cassette with some some old Wrecking Crew songs. It's there was nothing. That, that's what people don't understand. They didn't go into the studio like people do, like Tupac, and record three thousand songs. Every song they recorded was put on the album. That's why I have I have demos from Niggas for Life. I'm gonna play them this Wednesday because people keep bugging me about it. But I have five songs from Niggas for Life. All the songs are on the album, but one of them, the the whole song, the beat, and everything is different. But the other one is just different vocals. But every song is used. There was not any leftover songs, like really, like it was one song left over off the DLC album, and I have that, Bridget. But people just think that they recorded a thousand songs. People like swear that Easy has out songs. He doesn't. He, yeah, I, I always you know, wondered. I always you know. wondered why Easy was the one artist that didn't have any post posthumous uh, music out after because, he passed. Because he would, he was a rapper, but he was also really a businessman. People don't understand that he was always at the office. He he was mostly doing that shit, and then in between, you know, he had to pop out a baby or two. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, that's that's what it was. It was just like he had a shitload of music. Like Yellow would tell you all day. But he just never recorded anything. He had so much. He had like the album he was working. I guess temporary insanity. He had music for that. I guess somebody people had written stuff for him, but he just hadn't recorded anything. That that was Eric's thing. He just didn't record a lot. Like everybody now, everybody wants to record. It wasn't. It's easier now. Like motherfuckers pumping out thirty-seven songs in like seventy-two minutes and shit right now. Yeah. <laughs> like back then, it took with Eric. Early on, it was taking a hundred and some takes for him to get one one verse right. Like a hundred really? and some takes. I, bullshit you not. I'll ask Yella, ask anybody. It would take, I think Yella, Yella might have put that in his book. I, I haven't read it yet. I got to read that shit. But he might have put it, it used to take a hundred and some takes for him to get a verse right. So just imagine that. Like you not, now it's just like people, they don't give a fuck what they put out. They mumble the shit out of it. <laughs> this, this is a fucking hit. We got, we got another one. Putting words to a beat. <laughs> <laughs> you can take all these fucking vocals and put them on the same on a different beat. That's what I'm saying. It's just like the same shit. Like you can switch vocals. You can just go. All right, I got my vocals, your beat. We are gonna switch it. We are gonna keep going down the line like that. I'm gonna put my vocal on your beat, his beat on your vocals, and all the way. And it's gonna sound the same <laughs> shit all the way around the circle. But yeah, he just didn't record a lot, and that was okay. I don't. I don't. I guess it was just like that. But NWA, <clears throat> NWA also didn't. Like when they went to the studio, it was songs recorded. There was I don't recall any songs getting scratched. Like they was like, oh, we don't want to use that. So it was just back then it was different. If you listen to NWA shit, Dre didn't even leave room for somebody to sample the shit at the end. Yeah, and no, people yeah. Don't, people don't even know that. It, yeah. But I tell them like, oh, okay. It wasn't even instrumentals. Every instrumental we had, they made. They made a they made I think it was fifty of them for tour. I have only a couple left. I don't know where the rest of them at, but it was only one side had JJ Fad, the other side had NWA. They didn't even make it was no instrumentals. Like people look on a, look on a, um on all the singles. There's no instrumentals at all. There's no That's bonus beats. Crazy. There's none of that shit. People don't even realize that till I tell them. This is how crazy it was when they um after Shadow Compton when uh, Ren and Cube were doing shows. This is crazy too. The same exact day, Yella. Cube and Ren. I got a call from all three of them looking for masters. I was like, I don't have no I wish I did have masters. I fucking be holding the motherfuckers hostage shit. <laughs> so they were trying to get instrumentals for um to do the show. They couldn't find shit. Q found some dude. I don't know how the fuck he does it, but he could take your song, take everything out, and give you the instrumental. So they got wow. all the instrumentals for all the shit. I'm so like, that's how they stay able to perform. Okay. I still have I have just the stuff I had. I had like Easy Does It, Radio, the stuff we did in shows. I have that. But he, they had all the shit. Fuck the police. I'm like, what the fuck? But he found a dude that could do that. I'm like, you you had all these crazy. instrumentals on you had all these instrumentals on vinyl. records, right? On the vi- we, on vinyls, right? That was when McCola was still going. So I think mm-hmm. McCola was still going or whoever. And they had them pressed up especially for the tour. It was only one box. It might have only been twenty five. It might have either been fifty or twenty five. I think it was fifty because they didn't have a a sleeve. They were just in the um in the they were in the sleeve, not the whole the twelve inch cover thing. So it yeah. fit more. I think it was fifty, but that's all we had. That was it. That was for the whole tour. And then we had a um had dats. That was when they still had the A dats or whatever the fuck that shit was. So we had to show stuff on that. But the vinyl, it was only well, it was either twenty five or fifty, that was it. 
And I don't, and even back then, Dre didn't even like that. He, didn't, I don't even think he wanted to do that. I don't think, I don't, he didn't like instrumentals back in the day. I don't, I don't know why. He just didn't really like them. <laughs> yeah, he didn't really start doing that till later, but way later. Then, yeah, you know, even he that he couldn't really do it like that. I think he even might have been. I don't, I don't know what it was. Maybe he's trying to be different from New York because New York had all the instruments. Yeah, yeah, New York was heavy with that. the sample. So he might have just been trying to keep it West Coast, whatever. Whatever the reason was, it was no instrumentals. And people don't even realize that. They just, now when I tell them, like, <clears throat> some people go back and listen, like, oh shit, you couldn't, because you couldn't even sample none of this shit. Like, it's <laughs> like, okay, you won't even leave room for me to sample a fucking old <laughs> bar and shit. Like, I got to piece it together. But it was, it was, I don't know, it was crazy. He never did, but it was. I can tell you this right now. It was it was one hell of an experience sitting there watching him and Yellow work. Like that was something that just like, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the equivalent that what people say now. Oh, watching Kanye work is amazing. Watching Dre work was amazing because I think I think watching Dre work was probably better than Kanye because Dre was working with more. Like Kanye got it easy. Everything is digital now. You just push a motherfucker. You push the S button and it does a whole beat for you. Like oh shit, it's done. Dre was putting yeah. shit together. He was running running to LA, you have to find a record just to sample one thing. And that's crazy too. I also have a few of the records that I have the uh, original Dope Man, the uh, the Funky Worm, his his record. I have it, it as his, his writing on everything, the exact one he used for the album. I have that. Wow. I have that, I have that and a couple other, um, I forgot what, something else that they used. I have that shit too. But um, yeah, he, he it was just great watching him. Like it's, like all of those dudes back then, it was cool watching them. I, I watched quick before like it's because these dudes were making music without all the digital shit it was just like you got an sp 1200 that samples for 10 fucking seconds what the fuck are you gonna do like <laughs> shit, why, why do I do that? <laughs> so you got these dudes but but I, I give credit to everybody all the way across the map even new york it was just like they were doing beats that were banging with nothing they wasn't working with like now you can sample and you can sample unlimited. Like there's no time limit. Back then you were working with the max you can probably get is 15 seconds. And you created like Eric B for president, all these, like I saw how Marley Marr did um, make the music. This is before Biz passed. I saw a video, he was talking about that. And the way he, he had to do, he wanted to be different. So he took a snare and just made it all beat. And it went with the song. <laughs> That's now, crazy. But it's, just, it's it's great watching that type of shit. Like seeing somebody like Dre, uh, even like I said, even the Quick, uh, all these the West Coast. Even you know who was around when I was still at Roosters was Rhythm D. Mm. And he he was dope watching, but his problem was at the time he was trying to fill in Dre's shoes, and that's where he went wrong at. Like you, he had his own sound. I mean, you can listen to Paper Boy and all the other shit he did. It, he had his own sound, but then he started trying to fill in Dre shoes because he was the the, the head dude down ruthless. It didn't work. It, he did some dope shit, but it just as far as his career, it didn't elevate his career because he was stuck in that whole little circle of trying to be what Dre was. You can't be what Dre was. Be what Rhythm D is. Rhythm D got some. Shit. Some heat. I saw him put together beats that would just amaze the fuck out of me. Like he did, um, I think he did some shit for Boss too. Cause she she came to the house. She stayed. This is the thing about that house in No Wall. It was legendary. Like it, I don't, there's not a motherfucker that didn't come into the house. I I took Eric, Eric and Parrish to get food, and then I dropped PMD off at some chick's house to bro. The, everybody's been to the house. Boss stayed there for like a week, her and her DJ D. Rhythm D stayed there. Bone Thug's been there. Quick has been there. Eric, Cray, uh, Mr. Cartoon, CD artist, a tattoo artist. Man. Lived around the corner. He came to the house one day just on some, he was a young. I just want easy, easy to check out my book. I'll leave it. Easy. Invite him in from then. Look at him now. That that dude will tell you. Like, he's indebted to Eric. Like, it was a lot of shit that went down at that house. That was because that was just the house that anybody could go to. Cause that's the house. We, you can't go to Calabasas. No, we not letting no. you behind the gate. Yeah, no, Quit, no. Go walk, come hang out. No yeah, no walk. Yeah, yeah that's, that's easier to get to. You know, down down the six hundred five. We were good, and we were good with all the neighbors. Neighbors was cool. They knew sometimes they'd be motherfuckers over there. And Eric was Eric. This is Eric was crazy because he would come home at three sometimes in the morning. And be like, hey, wake me up. Hey, let's go outside and film this. I mean, film, oh, the NWA home video. If you look, I'm in the beginning of it. If you look at that, I'm wearing pajama bottoms. He woke me up. It was like three in the morning. Film this. I had a shotgun. I'm holding a shotgun with a big jacket on. World most dangerous group. But did you see my pants? They're like fucking 
<laughs> pajama pants and shit. <laughs> but him and him and Ren would do crazy shit like that. Even in the video, that it's the part where they're um, they're filming. At, okay, I don't know why you. They just set the camera on the car. In the car, come on, you're in the BMW, waxed up, it's good. They filming, trying to drive slow down the street, filming the shit flies off, and fucking, flies off and breaks. The whole thing is filmed. They, they put in the video, like the crack screen and everything. But they would, I, I think if Eric was alive, he would be doing some type of movie shit. Mm-hmm. You know, on a film, like maybe be on some Fifty Cent shit, effectively, because he was just really into that type of shit. He was really into like movies and and film. He always had the camera with him. He was really into that. So I think. So pretty he much like what have. Cube is doing, right? With, yeah. with Cube Vision and you know, probably making... wouldn't be a, he probably wouldn't be an actor, but he would probably be more behind the scene type shit. I don't think he would be an actor, but he would definitely are, be doing that. And are you close with Easy Son? Are you are you close with Lil E? Lil, uh, Lil yeah. E, Derek, Lil E, Derek, and Erica. I've grown up with them. I've watched them go from the little ones to the big ones. I'm still cool with all all three of them. I I don't really know Marquise like well. I know of him, and then. The one that's on Love and Hip Hop, uh, what's her name? Um, his daughter. I forgot her name, but oh, I don't yeah. really know. I don't really know her, but I can tell her character is, is, is somebody that I want to know because we we haven't talked talked, but we talked on social media. Like I've posted stuff, and then she commented on it, and then she she was just saying something about she we should get lunch sometime. So she seems like a cool person. So and then uh, any other kids i don't i don't know any of tamika's kids uh any of that i don't know them but so, but those three i'm very cool with. i'm always i got I, I got massive love for them like like a lot like just the most <laughs> like, is, I, is there I, anyone the longest is there anyone from the group you still talk to a lot and you're still close with please i talk to everybody almost every the only person i don't talk to on a regular is probably dre i talk to yella i talk to me <laughs> i talk to Ren. i talk to q probably the most i'm not gonna lie I, okay I, it's, it's sometimes I, I might talk to Cube a couple of times. It's, it's mostly text, phone call here and there. But I, I'm in touch with all of them. Like all every everybody across the map that was ruthless when I was there. I'm JJ Fed, Lay Law, Above the Law, Rest in Peace, KMG. Like all, all of those cocaine. I'm 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 good with everybody. I don't. Everybody was around when I was there. But what's really funny is like people take offense to that when I say it or I post it. Cause I posted something a while back and BG Knockout got offended. I don't know you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you're mad because I'm posting where Rufus was when I was there. He was like, it said something about I left him out. Like, Bro, I don't know you. You weren't there. I don't, you weren't even, you weren't even talked about. So why am I going to mention you? And so he took offense to that, but I'm just, I'm, I'm grown, bro. I'm from Compton too. You're not going to scare. I'm not a thug, but you're not going to, you're not going to scare me. Like, yeah. you want to, you got a problem with me. I left him, I left him my number in the DM. He didn't holler at me. He's still on social media. So he wanted them type of dudes. Like, he, uh-huh. he wants that, that attention. I don't, look, bro, I don't know you. You, if you take offense because I didn't know you, that's your problem. But yeah. I know that you, you, he, they lie a lot too. Like, they were never signed to Rufus ever. They were never signed to Rufus, but they tell people they were. They They're just weren't. around. Yeah. I don't, like I said, I don't be hating on these people, but people tell these lies and then people come to me thinking I'm lying. I'm not lying. These, these, those two dudes were never signed to Rufus ever. Ever, but they tell people they were. Well, I think BG does. I don't know what the other one does. Like I heard he's cool. I've never met him, but but you can't get mad at me because I'm posting what I was what was around me. Like really, that doesn't make any sense, my guy. Like you gonna be mad at me because this is the roof was I was around. Sorry, he wasn't around yet. But I don't know. He tried to he tried to internet bang on me. I'm like, bro, he's barking up the wrong tree, dude. I'm, <laughs> I'm six two, bro, two club step on you dog like don't, don't, don't. but i mean it ain't about that it's like i don't i don't want to bring that type of thing it's like, yeah yeah there's, there's no, no more it, yeah. it's not it, listen this is 2021 that banging shit has been gone like it, yeah, it's, yeah. it's and I, I like i said i've never been a banger i've never banged in my life i've never even shot a fucking gun but one thing you're not going to do is ever punk me that's just, <laughs> yeah. that was not going to happen like and i can there's some security guards out there that can tell you that it's not going to happen but I just I just trip on people when they get mad at dumb shit. It's like I okay, you did a song with Eric, whatever. That's cool, but don't take it to the point where you think you're NWA now. Like you 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 made it happen. Like bro, you were on a song with Eric. That was it. That's like it. a couple yeah. songs or whatever. But you weren't signed. You 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 don't have this. Little, like it, when they do shows, they only do that song. <laughs> when I heard, they only do those two songs. I don't even know. Did they have? I don't know if he has music. I really don't. That's crazy. I I. My thing is, I want to get along with everybody, but if these dudes want to be, I'm gangster, I'm from Compton, bro, I'm older than you, I'm really from Compton, like, don't fucking, I'm from Compton shit to me, like, dude, I'm from Compton, 
then <laughs> you seem to to that tight. Ask, ask, the, ask the Crip side of the Bloods and Crips where I'm from. They all live by me. I grew up with all of them. Ask them where I'm from. Okay, and ask them, can somebody just pump me? <laughs> like, this, it just makes no sense. It's like you cherish the time you, you had with Eric and, and just roll with it. Don't be out there acting like you owned it and all that. And just like, I, I hate that. That's why I don't like his baby mama and the daughter. It's just like you're treating a situation like you're the only people involved in the situation. There's no other kids. There's nothing. That's bullshit. Like, there's a lot of other kids. So, why would you do something about this man's death and not include everybody? There's nobody in his family included. There's no mother, nobody. How do, how, how do you want people to believe that? You really think people are going to believe that? It, it, it's hard to sell. But we TV would do anything for a dollar. I sat down with these dudes in probably a three hour meeting. They told me to my face, this documentary is not about his death. This is about celebrating Eric's life, blah, blah. It's not about his death. I already knew it was because I, I saw what Tracy was putting out there. They told me to my face. It had nothing to do with it. Turns out the whole thing is about his death. Okay. <laughs> but they begged me. And this is no lie. I'm not saying this trying to get some brownie points. They begged me. And you don't believe I got it was two other people with me. They can verify. They begged me for weeks. Can I get Ren? Can I get Q? Can I talk to Yella? Can I get this person? Will I sell them this photo? Can I do this? This is weeks. All of this shit. And you lied to me. <laughs> I wasn't going to do it after. I knew Tracy's real involvement with it because I knew that they talked about it. But for you to lie to my face just to try to get these dudes, I'm good. Like, I'm not, I told y'all about it. I'm like, bro, I'm fuck him though. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't want to do it. I, I wasn't even going to ask Rand because Rand's not going to, Rand, he's not going to put himself nowhere near that shit. Yeah. So it's just like, it, it's just weird. Like, I don't, I don't get why people do this. I really don't. I, I, I mean, I get why they do it, but why? Why do you want to be, you want your daughter to be a household name for what? Because she's Evie's daughter. What about his other daughters? What about his other sons? Do they not matter? Yeah. <laughs> they doing better than her. And I think that's what really makes her mad. They, you got two of them on, on, on these shows. Uh -huh. That's that's what she wants to be. She started that shit. They did a... Um, I've only had one conversation with her. We were... I forgot where we're at. And we were talking about when she did MTV. The um, Super 16... Sweet, Sweet 16 shit. I think that's where this shit really started with to me with, uh, with Tracy and EB because she was telling me like MTV was trying to have me do this this and that but I wanted to do this and I'm just like okay I guess you you know they're giving you a check but you're gonna do what you want I think that's where all this shit started with she wanted her daughter to be Kim Kardashian that's what I feel like she she wants to be Chris and she wants her daughter to be Kim or well, any of them like I guess shit. and it's dumb because you make yourself look stupid because you're going against the family. You're not including the family in nothing you do, but you're claiming, I loved Eric. If you loved Eric, you love his family. That's just the bottom line. There's, there's nothing that side of the family could do to me to make me say, oh, fuck them. Because that's Eric's family. I, yeah. they, that, that's where he came from. So I got love for them. So she don't think like that. She thinks like, oh, this is a paycheck. This might be, I mean, they made a they made an ass at his, his, his gravesite unveiling. They came there with a camera fucking crew Showing their ass at his gravesite unveiling. That's how fucked up she is. That's what makes me hate them even more. Like you, you at this man's gravesite unveiling and you showing your ass in front of all these people, in front of his mother. You showing your ass and you got a fucking camera crew with you. They had to tell the motherfucking camera crew, you gotta get the fuck out of here. Like that's disrespectful. It just really is. Like come later. After all that shit, you wanna film it? That's it. Film later. They wanna just get it on camera. They want it on this show. Let's do this. Let's fuck out of here with that shit. Like you're, you're stupid. Like yeah, it, it, it's it's a trip, dude. It's it, it, it's weird. If people really knew like what goes on, they would kind of be like, "What the fuck?" But you got three thousand people saying three thousand different things, so you yeah. don't know what to believe. That's why I, I try to be quiet. But at the same time, it's like it's certain things you can't be quiet about. You just really can't. You gotta speak up. And if you're not, then it, 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 you you you're doing yourself wrong. I feel that. I feel that. So, you know, we talked, you know, we talked a little bit about everything involving the story of NWA, Easy's life and his career. Um, I know you talked a little bit and I saw it on your Instagram. You're doing this. Um, you're doing the Easy e mix uh, kind of like in memoriam. Um, how 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 are you um, keeping his legacy alive with doing these? And I, I just 
for me, I just post shit. Like I, my, I kind of turned my my page into sort of a fan page a little bit because it was just, it just got to the point where people was asking questions and asking this. So just like okay, let me give them a little history. Because before I would just post bullshit. Now it's just like okay, give them a little history. But I did the EZ one. Now I'm gonna do an NWA one. And my thing with that is what people don't get. People just think I'm lagging because I've been talking about this shit for like four years. <laughs> what I was, but what I was trying to do is because I did a book with this fucking crook ass motherfucker. I'm doing a new one, but I was gonna do a new book and put that with the book. But I was also trying to get dropped from everybody. That's what I'm. That's the biggest holdup is trying to get dropped from everybody. Uh-huh. And because I wanted to kind of incorporate all that together, but people are like so much on me. I'm like, fuck. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. It, I mean, it's it's. it's 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 like five six songs, but it's like I'm gonna do I'm putting I'm using all the songs though, but I mean with the demos and shit. That's what people really want to hear. But I what's funny is I go live every day. I be playing this shit all the time. People just don't pay attention. Because <laughs> like, because my, my live thing is just like I just I don't want to. I'm trying not to be like everybody. I don't want to. I just like DJing. So sometimes I'm sitting around like fuck. I'm gonna go live. So I just go live and people. People watch, but I'm not. I'm not getting numbers like a D nice and a Jazzy Jeff. But right. <laughs> I'm also not trying to. I don't like announcing because I can say, okay, I'm gonna go live every day at seven o'clock. But most of the time at seven o'clock, I'm thinking about what the fuck, where the fuck I'm gonna go eat. <laughs> right. <laughs> fuck about DJ. You know, priority. But then, but then I might be eleven o'clock at night. I'm like, fuck, I'm bored. Let me go play some music. I mean, I, I, at some point, I might get more structured. But people just gotta understand. I just like having fun. But if you want to hear music, just come on. I, I, there's no set nothing. Like if once I get into a vibe, I'm going. It's like I, DJ is fun. I just yeah. play. I just play shit that I like. That's what people don't get. Like I'm not doing. I'm not at the club. I don't have no. There's no promoter on my shoulder. This is just shit that I like. You know what I mean? Like, so you're going to hear a lot of 80s hip hop. You're going to hear a lot of fucking grown people music. You're going to hear a lot of like shit like fucking music. So I just, I like music and people, some people get it, some people don't. Everybody, I I, I look at it. I don't really try to pay attention to the little comments, but I see people and it's always, I always see the NWA thing. I'm like, bro, I can't play NWA every fucking second of the right. fucking day. Okay, let's calm down, bro. How about you watch me, DJ, turn the volume down and you play Sarah the Compton CD. Isn't that the same? <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll feel the same, I promise. It'll feel, it'll feel the same. <laughs> now, nah, my thing is this, like I said, I just like the DJ. I've, I've been a DJ since I was 11 years old because of Dre. Dre is the reason I became a DJ. If I didn't live on the same street as Dre, I would not be a DJ. I don't know what I would be, but it would not be a DJ. He put that bug in me, and I've just loved it ever since. And it's just like, I stopped for a long ass time. I didn't even own turntables, and I just, I just didn't give a fuck. But then it's so fun to me. It's like, and now I don't really, I don't do clubs. I won't, I won't do a club. It's just like, that's not, you, I'm, you're not going to tell me what to play. You're not going to. Because this dude's spending this money on a bottle, you want me to? I don't give a fuck. I don't know him. I don't care. About him. He's giving you money. So I won't do clubs. I just I have fun with this live shit. I'm gonna start doing Twitch because you can go longer. But I I just like DJ. I just like playing music. I got a hundred thousand songs, bro. I can go forever. I'm not trying to be. Oh, I'm live. The, the barbecue or the so and so. I'm just, bro. Just look at my look at the top of your shit. You might see the circle on. I might be live. Right. It ain't no like if you want to look, look. If you don't, I, I, I'm really that dude that tells you it could be one person watching or it could be one thousand. I'ma still do the same shit. I don't give it any less. I, I just this is me. <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's, it's just me and who I am, and I love this shit. And I fucking, I just love hip hop. That's my whole shit. Do you still will DJ? Uh, uh, do you still DJ on vinyl or have you? I use Serato, but I mean, I got a ton of it. it it's weird for me because I had Serato since it came out, but I never really used it until up to like maybe two, three years ago. And then my thing with vinyl is just I don't like in this age, it's like I've, I've just recently started figuring out what needles work with vinyl. I didn't know you had special needles nowadays for vinyl. So I, mm-hmm. I used to be trying to use a vinyl. It was skipping. So I thought my vinyl was just old because I got old shit, but it, yeah. wasn't, it, it was the needles. So now I figured that out. So I occasionally do. I'm a, um Once I get on Twitch, I'm going to do. I'm gonna do like a vinyl set because I got some cool shit. I got I got um and me and Jazzy Jeff still laugh, but I have a uh, a test press of the first girls of the world ain't number trouble when Je- Jeff put it on his own label and they spelled his name wrong. <laughs> mm. I still have I still have I have that. I have test presses of a lot of shit. So but that's the hip hop I'm into. I'm 
I wasn't raised in Compton, but I, 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 I you, you would think I was from New York because I know so much New York shit because that's the only hip hop we had. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, man, like hip hop, it's such a, it's such a, it's such a crazy thing, man. Like, especially you know, coming where you came from, you know, kind of putting. It was at a time when they were putting like that West Coast sound on the map. Yeah. So you know, DJing, were were you playing a lot of? East Coast, like you had to play a lot of East Coast stuff in the beginning, right? I just posted a picture the other day, the one with uh Shantae and Biz, because I give them props because that's where I came from. Like, I I can it's crazy, I'm West Coast, but I can name almost everything in New York from back then from, from the Juice Crew, Cash Money, Marvelous, all, all of that, like Ultra Magnetic MCs, Boogie Boys, like I all of that. That's all that's all in my playlist, all of that, shit. like everything. Um, What's in my uh, study B, Cool C, all, all of that shit. Like these, these are the people that I came up on. Cause we had on the West Coast, we had, we had King T, we had Spade, a few others, but we didn't have a lot like we do now. Like it wasn't, yeah. there wasn't a big. So every every DJ I know, we turned to New York. You you had the LL, the Rock the Bells, the Peter Pipers. These are what made yeah. DJs. I don't give. I don't care where you're from, but these these are the songs that made DJs. And they came out of New York, so that's what I know. All New York shit. Like I said, I have playlists that the songs keep going. It's just some shit that you'd be like, "Damn, I forgot about this. I forgot I can go. I'll go from from the late '70s when it started to to not now. I, I can't. I can't do this for music now. <laughs> it's, it's hard for me. I, I try. I'm not gonna lie. I hate on it, but I, I try sometimes. It's, I can't. It doesn't go with nothing. That from then, like I can't make. The Migos with fucking Karis one, like <laughs> yeah, I thought that's disrespectful. That's challenging, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's disrespectful, but then like, well, how, what you gonna do? Like, BPMs are a little high, you know? Yeah, it's a little different. <laughs> but, but no, I, I think back then we we really, I, I'm speaking for all the West Coast DJs. We did turn because I, I did a lot of shit with K Day, because I would go to the events before they start, get there early. And Greg Mack would let me open for all the DJs, for all oh the dudes that I, I looked up to, the Bobcats and the Battlecats, all those dudes. So, but that's what they were playing. They were playing that, and then they were playing all the fast shit, like the Lookout Weekends and all the all the shit that LA was kind of known for back then. All the fast shit, Siberian Nights, like all of that. They would play that type of shit, and then it was just going to L- and, into New York shit, the My Adidas, and so. I basically grew up on East Coast hip hop, even though I was West Coast in the mix of everything. We didn't really start having anything until shit, probably late, late eighties into the nineties. Yeah. When you guys I see sorry, I see sorry, the NWA. That's Mix when a lot. Again, like okay, yeah. yeah. Too short. All the way up there. Yeah. Then the, oh with two short drop. That's he was the first dude that we met. Like we did a show in San Diego before the tour. He was out there in San Diego. He was literally in that same Cadillac, the white one from the cover. No way. I swear to God, no lie. I was like, I've been a two-year fan since that. Like, we still do it to this day, but just that alone, like, that album, Freaky Tale, I played that shit the other night. I, I, you can play that shit and go eat. That shit like 11 yeah. minutes. That shit like 11 minutes, that shit. But it, right. just, it was something, like, if you look at everybody's first album, it's always some legendary shit on it, and that was his. Like, look at E-40. Like, all those dudes, that's when the whole West Coast started opening up. Like, you guys. Mm-hmm. T shirt came out, E forty, then they started putting up the Mac Dre's and the Souls of Mischief and everybody it just started coming together and that's when the West Coast kinda of started forming. But the problem yeah. with the West Coast and the still the problem is we don't know how to like kind of I guess work with each other. Yeah. Like that that's that's kind of the issue. Like we don't really know how Hey, turn that light up. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> it's getting dark on this thing. Oh. Um, we don't. No, nah, I'm telling. Um, we don't really know how to work with each other. Like it's that's just the problem. Like East Coast dudes. No, you know who really works with each other? Texas. South. Tech, yeah, yeah. The South. Bro, I know people for a fact in Texas don't like each other, and they're still. Hey man, I'm doing an album. All right, I'm on it. Like they don't. They 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 want. They like. They hate each other to the point they'll shoot at each other. But they'll be like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm all right. I'm they understand the solidarity. They, yeah. they understand, and I just seen a um. I watch um. Drink chaps a lot with a uh, Nori, and he had Scarface on there yesterday. And I was talking. To I him. was watching that one. Yeah, and you, and, but just from Scarface is basically the EZE of the South. Yes, he he put all those dudes on, like all of them, and that's just what I'm talking about. Like, you, if you got an artist that that helps everybody around, that's a real artist, and then he can rap too. 
But then he claimed like he was like, I'm a better producer than rapper. I'm like, shit, you must be you Drake then, bro. Like, <laughs> it's like a... I'm gonna tell you right now from the south, he's my favorite rapper. Oh and hands down. we had dinner with him one night when he was in Texas. Me, Ren, and somebody else. And it was crazy because I was kind of shook because he was telling us about his boy just got shot the night before. I think in that same restaurant. In the restaurant. It might have, it might have been a different one. But he said his boy just got shot in the restaurant. I'm like, nigga, you got that type of niggas following y'all around. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but no, he was just, but just talking to him. In my life, it's only been two people that I've been around and they were talking and I'm just like kind of engaged. Scarface and Chuck D. Those are the only two people that I haven't been around, and they were talking, and I'm just like, shit. Like you just, you just, you just listening. I don't use listen to motherfucker. I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's cool. But they, you listen to them and talking and listening to Scarface. And back then, he just he is so much up here. <laughs> he yeah, is so much up here. He's and got, he's got Chuck a lot. Chuck D of is the same way. Chuck D is deep. Like it was one night. It was me, Rand, Chuck D, LL Cool J one of LL's people and I think somebody else. And we were just talking. This is when LL was in that transition when he was really big and he was getting cocky, then he, but when he was coming down. We were right there, we were having a conversation about that. And then, but then Chuck chimed in on it and that's when it just, the whole, the whole shit just oh, changed. It's just like, it's just like sitting there like, shit, keep going, keep going. But it's just, uh, I don't know, those dudes have so much, so much wisdom. Uh-huh. Like. It, and then I, I like the part on the, the drink champs when they were talking. He asked yeah, Scarface, like, when you're writing, do you, are you going through something? Like, no, this is just how I write. He was like, if you put this on a, a different beat, it's, gonna, it's not going to sound the same. It's going to be different. You're going to get a different vibe. So I I, I see him and me because everything I do is, is more for a vibe. Like when I'm DJing, that's why I don't I don't like bright ass lights. I just got my lights behind me. It's a vibe to me. Like I I I, I get into this, this zone, and that's why I like to stay. And I think Scarface is kind of the same way when he does his music. Cause he was like, this thing, this ain't a mood. It's just me. I'm just vibing. <laughs> like I hear something and it's just a vibe. So that's kind of what I go with. But it just hearing stories from him and then stories he's talking about with Tupac, it's, it's crazy. I, I just, I appreciate that type of shit in hip hop. Yeah. And I wish the younger generation did because they don't. They just, they just see their little money and they think that that's 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 what hip hop is and it's not. That's not what hip hop is. It's, it's really not. You gonna you gonna get your money. Yeah, hip hop's like, a lot deeper than that. It's it's way deeper. And they don't get it. They don't understand. It's it's real. It's it's really elements to it. And people they people stop paying attention to the elements. It, when when the money start getting longer, the elements just went out the window. I don't give a fuck it. I don't give a fuck about the hip hop. Like, all right, that's cool, but. You gonna be that dude. I hope that money lasts a long time because your career won't. Like it, you have to understand everything shouldn't be about a dollar. It just shouldn't. And I know people be like, "Oh, I'm getting my money." If you're doing something right, you're gonna get your money. Like <laughs> there's no question to that. Like you, you're gonna get your money. But it's just like I just think I wouldn't put in all this work to just get some money and go leave. Like it's like I, I don't get that. Like when people do it, like that's their thing. Like oh, let me get this quick money. I'm out. Like I don't give a fuck. Like. All right, look at Cube's career. Look at all these people from my generation's career. They all have careers. Like, they didn't just get a bunch of money and say, I'm not. Look at Nas. Like, people don't even understand the shit he's behind. Like, okay. people don't even understand he's behind, off the top, two multi-billion dollar companies from Ring to that Pill Pop shit. People don't get that. They don't know that. They don't know that he was behind these. They don't understand it's, it's he got really, chips off of these. Yeah, it's, it's but really this, deep threat. But that's what I'm talking about. Like, if you're an artist, to come from this generation and you took your what you know and expanded it into a business e40 look at his look at his drink selection now heavy heavy drink selection mm-hmm. be dre beats it's like you this generation don't know how to treat their 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 wealth like that mm-hmm. they their wealth to them is let me go buy a chain that's definitely gonna choke the shit out of me let me go buy some clothes that don't match and let me go buy a bunch of cars that i really don't need and i don't even have time to drive that's exactly. that, that's that's their their I made it thing. Yeah, it's, it's, but, it's, it's definitely a lot of living in the now instead of. Yeah, you got to think. You got to think. Okay, I'm in my twenties. I'm doing this rap thing. I know rap is basically unless unless I'm Drake, I got a three year lifespan. Let me figure it out. Like everybody's not Drake. Drake is doing something that hasn't been done in hip hop ever. There's been nobody with a with a run this long. There hasn't, and I don't even fuck from Run DMC all the way down. Everybody can't do that. <laughs> that's his run let him run 
man. But yeah, man. It, it is what it is. I mean, hip hop is hip hop. I love where I came from. I'm always rep easy. I'm always rep NWA. I'm always rep just real hip hop. I mean, it, it it don't matter what culture you're from. If, if it's real and I and I, I rocked with it, I'm down with it. I, I miss the days of going to New York and going to the record stores called down downtown records, downstairs records, or whatever it's called. When it's down, I miss going and doing that shit. This shit is like all we have now is Amoeba. <laughs> yeah, if that. You know, I mean, what, I went there. It's, it's not the same. Yeah, yeah, it's not the same. But it's just like I miss the days of being able to go crate digs and just dig for shit and go out to real shit. I miss the fucking uh, Unity Club Unity. I miss shit like that. Shit, it's like when it was, it was problems, but it was still it seemed more carefree than like going to a club in Vegas. Now it's like a mission. Gotta wear this. Can't do this. Gotta do that. Whoa, standing in this line. Bro, I'm good. Like, I'm good. That's like it's. Too much. It's too motherfucking much. Yeah, man. So now, it's, it's, lives on, man. Yeah, it's always gonna live on, except for if we just keep losing too many good ones. <laughs> like, yeah, what's I going? know. I mean, man, we've been losing, we've been losing some bad ones, which is I, 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 I don't, I, I don't smile at that. Like it's it just it's it, it's a lot that's gone for no reason. Like that ex dude. Like come on, bro. Like man. there's too much jealousy out here. That's it, that's it's horrible. Like it's it, it, natural causes. All right. Overdoses, jealousy. We don't need that shit. We we got enough shit going on to be trying to. Now you got to worry about like fuck. I can't even go buy a motorcycle. Motherfuckers might shoot me coming out this. Right. Yeah, yeah man. This has been a good one. Thank you for oh, coming on. Done. Thank you for taking Anytime. the time. To talk to us, sorry. man. Sorry, my lights are um, darker. Oh no, you good, man. Uh, Anytime, where, man. Where can we find you on social media so we can see all of your, uh, so we see all your uh, stuff. Instagram, just DJ Speed in WA and um, Twitch and what, Twitch and TikTok. I don't even really know how to use TikTok, but I have it. That's just real DJ Speed in WA. So that's the only place I really be at. I got all that other stuff, but Twitter, I don't think I'm old enough to keep using that shit. I need to be like 80 or something. <laughs> yeah, man. The world's most dangerous DJ, DJ Speed right here. WestCoastStyles.com. This is your man, Jamal. Thank you for coming through. Yeah, for and sure. I'll, when I get that done, I'll let you just peep it out. I'm going to uh, start working on that little mixtape, though, because you know, I don't want it, so I'm just going to do it. The other one, the easy one, I did in, like, a day, because they only gave me a day to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, I, I, I can't wait to. It. it should be good. I can't wait to check it out. And we're going to have to have you back on and talk more about hip-hop, man. Anytime, bro. You can holler at that fool. Give me whatever. I'm down. I'm always down to talk. I was never sure, man. Thank you again. Thank you for your time. We'll see you again, my man. All right, for sure. All right, man. Nice. I think we're good.